Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Tua, the Dolphins, rolling on offense. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. Not only is it a great cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So if you dig this kind of video, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. I'm really trying to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. So all sorts of nuanced, detailed depth about not only the quarterback position, but high level offense and defensive football. If you're interested, hop over there, join, become a member. The link is in the video description. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. To a the Dolphins rolling on what sure looks like is the slowest field in the NFL. Right here at the bottom of the screen, Tyreek Hill running an inside release, inside fade. Pretty rare. What's even more rare is to see a middle field closed safety shading away from Tyreek Hill. <laughs> Not sure what the hell is going on defensively. Tua and company make some pay. Tyreek Hill just absolutely unstoppable one-on-one. -on -one. No idea what is happening on defense. Not going to try to make sense of it. But Tua couldn't get this thing snapped quick enough. We start in 3 by one get to 3 by 2 walk the backer out. And again, you can see the safety here. There's only one safety. He's, he's not in the middle of the screen. He's hedged to the boundary. We've got one-on-one -on -one down here. They're going to run shock. I'm used to calling shock stick, locked hitch, and then inside fade. Now, normally, that inside fade is an outside release. But right here, he takes a best release because this nickel star type has got outside leverage. So he does a great job of going in and then getting back out to his landmark. So it's still away from the non-existent safety. It's just a really nice job. Watch that route from Tyreek Hill. Inside release, inside fade. Whoop! <laughs> I mean, look at the safety up top. Come on. Come on, commies. That ain't it. Just absolute dumpster fire defensively over there. But Miami still looking fast. Even on this track, this bog of a field. To a efficient, effective, Tyreek Hill, wide open, pure speed, dynamic. Hell yes. Next one here, third and four. Tua, doing Tua things. We're going to rip what I'm going to call an angle post up top to the number one. This is off a fake bubble. This is what most people call post bluff wheel up top, trying to get A-chan up the wheel. Love seeing A-chan back healthy, rolling out there. If you know, you know. This is one of those plays. Okay, so first let's just appreciate the post up top and the anticipation. I'll pause it when he lets it go. He throws it right there. <laughs> Okay, so l let this wash over you. I, I know maybe some people get old, get tired of this, but this is split field safety. The mic is running towards it. Okay, so it's got some Tampa vibes. We are running a post into this space. You know, it's paired with that bluff wheel because we're trying to make this thing look like we're running a bubble up top. And you read this thing inside out. Now, I can remember explicitly, okay, being in a meeting, going from the West Coast world to the digit world offensive-wise, and they used to say, yeah, we like post into half-field safety. And where I had come from before, that was a hard no. And it's really not a traditional post. Like, I think of post as like big post over the top or kind of glancy, kind of up the seam. These posts back in the day were more of what I was used to calling angle routes, and they kind of came up, and the angle changed based on what the shell was. So you kind of run to space, and it was a lot more space-centric before you had to get a certification. And that's what this reminds me of. Miami is just so dynamic, and Tua can do this with the anticipation. I mean, the ball is halfway to him. The mic's opening to that side. It doesn't matter. Now the ball, you know, again, we talk a lot about throwing with anticipation on this channel. It's not going to be perfect all the time when you play with this kind of anticipation. It's back hip. It's a nice catch. It's a big hit. It's a big-ass chunk, too. I just love, I love 
this type of quarterbacking, man. Great anticipation. Find the window. Big chunk. Next one here. First and 10. Ball's on the 19. We're going to get, we're in three by two empty. Two is going to look like work the seam up top to the slot hill. I think he might be able to throw that ball. But what I love about this play is two uh, creating outside the pocket. Yes, Waddle drops it. Yes, you can't catch it for him. But Tua has incorporated this into his game, in my opinion, this year more than others. He just looks healthy. He looks like he can move a little bit better. He's got a little bit more elusiveness, a little bit more acceleration, a little bit more space to create. And again, that ball is perfect. It hits him right in the face. Again, he takes his eyes off it, can't catch it. Doesn't take away the play from Tua. Now, once we get into this 3 by 2 open look here, you know, you be the judge. Really, this seam ball to me is based off where the safety's location is. So if the safety's inside of you, you got to be really careful. And I got no problem with this no throw here. I just, that's a throw we've seen Tua make before, especially with this speed, with the trust that they have, the anticipation that they play with, play that thing out. So it's probably a high to a low out there to the number one. Right there, he's already off of it. No. Back down, we're going to now work to the right. Right, no. Left, get out and create. Waddle's in the center of the field. Through the fog, drop. I just like seeing Tua grow into this kind of potential bit more of a playmaker. Because at some point during the season, you're going to need to make plays like this to create, to extend. And I think he's been better this year than any other year as a pro. Next one here, third and six. Massive play. Big adjustment here from Tyreek Hill. Probably a little bit of a CFL rolling start. This is one of those plays <laughs> where unless you're in the meeting room, you don't really know what the hell happened here. Because I would bet a lot of money that someone's in the wrong. And I probably am always going to lean on the quarterback side here. Again, I think we've already seen Tyreek Hill this year run maybe some wrong routes and get rewarded for it. I can think of an early touchdown in the season. But if I had to guess how this is supposed to be designed, this is supposed to be a deep flag or pylon. This is more of that sale Seattle, and then we're in the flag. Okay, the reason I say that and that it's not supposed to be a post is because if we're, we're doing this fast Miami motion out here and we're running a post, usually if there's a post safety, that post is a no-go. Now, maybe Tyreek Hill just blows the top off these coverages, so you have to read them kind of bastardized. But to me, that that's not a thing. And again, I, I know people like to get on Tua with the deep ball accuracy and missing throws. He doesn't miss throws like this, in my opinion, very often, where you're going to throw a ball that should be on the hash all the way outside the numbers. So I'm guessing Tyreek Hill probably just runs the wrong route. I don't care enough to go back. The other part about this play that's interesting to me is this is a side adjust situation that Miami falls into. So the offensive line is most likely going 5-0. Tua probably has to play this hot up top, but the back in the offensive line does a nice job picking it up. So first, let's just appreciate the fact that they're being aggressive down the field. Again, sure looks like Tyreek Hill's running a post. Sure looks like Tua is throwing a flag or a back pylon. The other thing that'll just make you sick, just imagine if they would have missed this. And you see the new number two down here on the sale, wide open, <laughs> right? It's third medium. I love the aggressiveness. Again, a massive play. 10 is a unique weapon. And my thing about it is I'm not even mad that he ran or they had a miscommunication. In the league, you're going to have guys do shit like that all the time. Sometimes you just got to make it work. That's the truth of it. Now, pass pro wise here, this to me is a problem. We've got five person protection. I almost guarantee they are going 5-0 right here. So these five for these five. That would put the back for my money one to two. This to me in most West Coast worlds would be a side adjust situation where you got to throw this thing over here. Hot, slant, dart, hitch, fade, whatever. Slanted, side adjust option. Now, what ends up happening here is we fall out of this thing and we fall into picking up these two. If they knew that they had it, good for them. I'm not sure how you would know that or confirm that, but this is a fast way to get hit in your chin. You can see 31, he's stepping up thinking he's got the back. The linebacker, left guard, takes his guy, 
So they pizza theory that thing. Will you take my guy? I'll take the next one, scan. So 31 does a nice job adjusting. But man, living on the edge here, a few different levels. <laughs> I will also say, even if <laughs> even if two is trying to throw it where he throws it here, this kind of footwork is not for me. The old karaoke chuck from the warning track. So don't get don't get all sensitive here, Dolphin fans. To me, this is lucky on a number of levels. First, the route hookup throw. Next, the protection. Next, the footwork from Tua. All leads to a touchdown. Good for you when it works. Next one here, third and six. Just a beautiful hookup up top to Tyreek Hill again on what I'm used to calling an angle post. Ridiculous anticipation. Great catch. World-class speed. Love the design. Tua's footwork outstanding. <laughs> so much to like. That's why this has and continues to be one of my favorite offenses in the league. They've got so much speed. So now that Achan is back healthy, we're going to go fast two motion up here. That's then going to put Tyree Kill on what I'm used to calling that angle post. We've got a half field player right here. So half field safety. Well, it looks like quarter, quarter, half. So quarter, quarter, half field player. We're going to take advantage of this zone right here. They're going to ask a linebacker type at the line of scrimmage. Okay, He's standing in the A gap, a little Zim special here to come back and play the hook to curl area and Tua just cooks them. So awesome job here. Check out the release up top from Tyreek Hill. Speed. Woo! Good luck, Cloud Corner. Trying to get your hands on him. <laughs> Bench press and air. <laughs> now watch Tua's anticipation. The base. Look at the base. I mean, the shuffle drop is perfect. Look at the anticipation. Throwing it right there. I mean, it's awesome, y'all. I love it so much. It's a great catch, too. No doubt about it. Can finish through the tackle as well. Just so, so good. Lined up. Awesome. Aggressive. Big play. Halftime. You dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe. Hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you for taking the time. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football subjects. We have courses on RPOs, tempos, pass protection. How to Beat Every Coverage is the best-selling course. We also have an entire offensive system available for you, so hop over there and enroll. The link is in the video description. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Check out those linked in the video description as well. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, 93 seconds left to go. Second quarter, third and 12, balls on the 20. We're going to go full field read. We're going to go violent pocket movements. we got to reset, hit the backside in down here to the bottom to waddle. Wide open over the ball. Just a massive third down conversion. Such a good job. Again, I think Tua looks as good as ever as a pro moving around. Violent movement over. Reset your feet. Love a good in right down the hash. Outstanding. Also really a big fan of this concept up top. I'm used to calling this post wheel out. So post, wheel, and then an out by the number three. And then we've got this in coming to the bottom. So nice job here from Tua again. Top of his drop, you got a violent reset. So you got to move, but you reset your feet and you throw in right down the hash. Just a really nice job working left to right with the pocket movement. Playing at a really high level right now. Check this thing out. No, no, reset. And again, you can see the base. No wasted movement. Quick reset. Whoop. Quick, accurate throw. Third and 12 inside the red zone. Great job staying alive, using his vision, being aggressive down the field. Nice pass protection for the most part, besides the hold at left guard. <laughs> Move, reset, right on him. Hell yes. Next one here, third and two, third quarter. We're going to go motion, waddle, into the flat, no, to the mesh, Tyree Kill coming top to bottom. Yes. Catch cover two on third and short. You know, you're calling mesh most likely for man. 
to get that little rub. No to the flat. Yes, a Tyreek Hill. Quick one to two, first down. Love it. Again, I love the offensive architecture, the structure, to be able to utilize the speed. So again, nobody motions more or better than the Miami Dolphins were coming across. We're in the flat. Okay, that is one. Two, where the ball ends up going right here. He's going to settle up in zone. Two. Two. We're going to run that deep hook with that little top motion. Doesn't really matter who's who in the zoo as far as what which one of those guys do that. I think they're interchangeable. Someone's going over the ball. Someone's running the mesh over the top. So you get this idea again. Motion one. It's third and short. The under mesh coming to you. One to two, really nice job. Again, simple yet effective. Good versus everything. Who thinks you're going to catch Tampa on third and two? They've got answers. No to the flat, yes to the mesh, get vertical, first down. Excellent job. No panic, decisive, good pass protection, just good professional NFL Sunday quarterbacking. Love it. Next one here, first and 10, big play action shot. We're going to try to rip the dagger up top. It's not there, or I should say Tua doesn't throw it. And we throw the check down for a big chunk. Quick, decisive, again, accurate, leads to the yak. Some people didn't play this guy this week. If you know, you know, that hurt. <laughs> but I love seeing him look healthy. Again, play action, look at the drop on an angle. No, down the field, yes, to speed underneath. Make people miss tackles, big chunk again. Just so much speed everywhere. Now, we have seen Tua throw this ball before. This, to me, is dagger up top versus what I would consider quarters. So there's the clear or the inside post. Here's that deep in right behind it. Now, what this does to a defense when you're so good at these intermediate kind of chunk throws, it makes this second level of the defense, linebacker types, get depth. They got to really get themselves back out of there. Then that creates big check down opportunities. So you get A-chan going downhill on the check down. I also think that Tua has thrown this ball before. Yeah, it'd be tight, but we've seen him throw tight throws on time with anticipation down the field before. So you play it out. I think this is half quarter quarter up top. When he lets us sing right there, I mean, he, we've seen him throw that. The outside in with anticipation. Corner knows it too. I like the decision to come down to the check down. I like the check down going downhill. We make somebody miss. That's a big chunk on an easy throw. This offense just provides so many opportunities for big chunks. The shift, the motion, the play action. Look at the angle drop. Again, this little subtle. It's not a straight drop back. He's lined up to throw to the right. That's most people's left. Make somebody miss. Good decision. Big chunk, let's go. Next one here, the post wheel flat. I think two is as good as anybody who's ever run this at this play. I know Mahomes, I think probably was the original one to do this, but two and the Dolphins just do it more than anybody else nowadays. This is a first level RPO, but you've got this opportunity for this kind of hybrid -y post. The wheel, and again, I talk about it a lot, but I saw a couple people try it this weekend. So here to me is that kind of like hybrid -y wheel. That can settle down, slantish. Here's that wheel, rail, and then you get the flat coming across. And this is all based off a first level RPO. We're reading the C gap defender here. So just a really nice job. Again, we talk a lot. I know a really good course on RPOs that talks about the vertical stretch of an RPO. So you're stressing yourself down the field, right? With the post, the wheel, the rail, the horizontal stretch with the flat and the power of being able to run it between the tackles or at all. So just a really nice job. Again, nobody better at seeing these kind of hook, curl defender spaces, areas of the field. You know, on the quarter roll, nice, easy chunk, just puts so much stress on a defense. And again, he just makes the right read every time, it seems like. Next one here, this one's a funky one. Because I think this showcases some of the issues that motion causes with the free runner that we'll get down here. But again, it showcases Tua's elusiveness. So he can put a move on now. He looks quick. There's a little change of direction. There's a little bit of explosiveness. He just looks healthy, man. 
That's the honest truth of it. Watch how quickly he moves. We've got a free runner to the left. We'll talk about it, how they get there. But that little quick sudden movement, you know, in a swamp, boom, and get the completion. I really, really like it, man. I do. I really do. Now, let's talk about what the hell's going on here with the shift and the motion and the pass protection. I really don't care what the read is, what the concept is, just the pass protection. Okay, so we're going to go back to before the motion, and I'm going to call this like a little orbit motion. So we have five people in the pass protection unit, five offensive linemen. We're going to be motioning the back. Okay, five people are out on these routes. Okay, so he's out on the route. Most offensive line coaches are not going to love this kind of movement because it makes the declaration more complicated. So right here, there are six people at the line of scrimmage, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. If someone moves with the motion, so as the motion moves, someone has him in man-to-man, -man, so he decides, oh, I'm going to follow him and go back, that's a pretty good indication that guy's in coverage. So if the offensive line initially is going here, so one, two, three, four, five, and this guy is free right here, okay, you can play it that way. But when he moves and this guy moves, I would love, love, and this is the next step for Tua, would love to see Tua overrule the offensive line unit and take the point out here because then we would be blocked up. That's the next level. It's hard as hell. It's not impossible for the center to see that, but it's hard. And for me, this would be area where if you're looking for areas of growth for Tua, this is one of those. Just the next step in understanding how pass protection, motion, and scheme can all be interwoven to protect yourself a little bit better. You can see the backer move with the motion, right? Like he's eyeballing HN. Let's, let's change the declaration right there. Instead of, you know, going full Lamar Jackson here on a free runner running right in your face. Because again, no one's really looking. Where, where do you want the hot throw to go, bro? Catch and throw. No one's looking, no one's looking, no one's looking, no one's looking, still right there. So it'd be a tough hot throw. It just doesn't look like it's baked into their system. So Tua makes it work. And again, sometimes you got to overcome your coaching. You got to overcome your scheme. You got to overcome what they're asking you to do. And that's exactly what Tua does right here. But I think this is an example of a really clean, you know, if they're turning right with the center, when he moves like that, let's redeclare it over to the left, block ourselves up, and feel good. All right, like you see the center go to the right. We want to flip that. Regardless, we got a completion. Made it work. Next one here. This is third and 12. We're going to throw a deep corner down here to the bottom to the new number one, Tyree Kill. We're going to read the cloud corner and put this ball right on the sideline. Now, I know it's not caught, okay? But it's thrown where it could be caught. This is a quarterback evaluation, quarterback analysis. I feel like maybe it's like a hitch late, but the throw is still awesome. So what am I talking about the play? I guess it would be the number two right here, Tyreek Hill. He's going to run a deep corner. So for me here, we're on the 23-ish. We're going to run all the way up to like the 43 and then run a corner. We're going to put significant stress right here on this cloud corner. So this flat defender-ish. As he does not get enough depth, we're going to let this thing rip. Now, I probably would prefer five and a hitch here. As opposed to whatever this is at the very top where it's kind of like, uh, and he holds on to it for a tick too long. It doesn't change the fact that this is a ridiculous throw. To the wide side... <laughs> well down the field outside the numbers and it's a strike okay and it very easily could and potentially should be caught one two three four five hitch hitch just one extra hitch that one extra hitch we're still playing with anticipation but i feel like Tua could have just let it go on the first hitch then you've got a chance to catch that thing inbounds without the collision you see how he's still going to catch it inbounds but now the safety can drive it and push him out so it's, it's a big-time throw. Just let the throw wash over you more than anything else. It's a hell of a day, a really nice win. I thought the Dolphins looked really good for the most part. I thought Tua looked good. 
this is just one of those throws where you're like, man, this is a pretty impressive throw. It's just a tick late. And again, it's easy for me because I've got the clicker and I decide what <laughs> clips go on the video. But the feet here, click, click, late. Okay, so just tight hitch, tight reset, trust it, and get it out just like you normally do because that throw is awesome. The timing's just a tick late. So that is a wrap. Tua, the Dolphins, Tyree Kill, this offense, just so much fun to watch. Love the anticipation, love the accuracy. Again, I'm going to keep preaching and providing evidence of what I think a healthy, more explosive, a little bit better change of direction playmaker Tua is and is able to provide this offense a little spark when something isn't there. That, coupled with the continued growth and how they use their speed, the motions, the formations, the run game, just so much fun to watch. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.